Welcome back everyone here at the beautiful Frankfurt School of Finance and Management. I hope you enjoyed your lunch break and you are ready to get going again. And go we will with the segment on renewable energy, ESG and tokenization. And I have already with me here our first keynote speaker. It's Kai Siefert from Ridland Code Energy Solutions, and he will speak on how tokenization of energy, machines, and data brings the Green New Deal to the people and investors. Welcome, Kai. Thanks a lot. Stage is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I think it's time to bring some energy back into the room here after lunch. Um, who wants a share of my power? You can decide after, after my talk. Um, so today, I want to shed some light on the tokenization of energy. And I want to do this by introducing you to the capabilities of the energy tokenization platform that we developed uh, called MyPower. And um, also, I want to explain a little bit how this is helping our customers and users to develop ESG compliant products. My name is Kai Siefert. I'm the managing director of Riddle and Code Energy. That's a joint venture by the well known blockchain interface company Riddle and Code and Wien Energie, which is the largest regional energy supplier of Austria. And um, yes, you would say it's an easy sell, right, um, to talk about ESG when you are developing software that is supporting, supporting and accelerating the energy transition. But I can tell you it's by far not. Um, if, it's, if there's maybe one thing that I want, want you to take away from my talk today, it's that the Green New Deal can easily become the same old deal if you're not taking the right measures. Yeah? And we at Riddle & Code, um, we think that the G in ESG not only stands for governance, um, through policy making, but also for governance, for governing the design of your products as a front runner of regulation at the end of the day. Okay. So, let me kick off my presentation with a statement that might be obvious to, to most of you, but it never gets old uh, to impress myself. Um, after, after six years in developing uh, energy-centric applications uh, uh, in DLT, uh, based on DLTs, um, it, is, it is really much uh, a thing that, is, uh, that keeps surprising me, and, it, and it's, it's so true, that due to the very distributed nature, renewable energy sources are the perfect match and can even become a driver of DLT applications and DLT adoption in the, in, uh, in the, industry, uh, in the industry space. What you see here at the right-hand side is an overview uh, of Europe. Um, this is the existing solar power parks, the large ones, not the small ones, then it would be only yellow, huh? um, that are already installed today. You can see it's highly distributed and there are a lot of them. Already today, we have two million installed PV panels in Germany. And according to Cisco data, at the end of 2021, we reached eight billion connected devices on the global grid, only in the energy sector. So I hope you understand that we perfectly, coming from the blockchain side, fit into this game. But now is the question, how large is this game? One hundred trillion US dollar need to be invested in clean energy in the next 30 years to decarbonize our global economy. To limit global warming to 1.5 degree, according to the International Energy Agency. One hundred trillion US dollar. That's by far the biggest commercial opportunity of our lifetime. And it's certainly something that will impact everyone, every nation, every company, every human being. And the big question is, will this impact be a good one? Because that's not given. Well, the MyPower platform certainly offers 
several capabilities to support you and our customers in producing and developing ESG-compliant products. But today I only want to focus on one thing, on one topic, which I think is one of the most important ones. And this is um, financial participation. So the ability to, to create the ability to financially participate in the Green New Deal uh, for our customers. And um, I just want to mention, there, there, there are several hurdles out there, but I just want to mention a few of them. Um, all of them um, come from the, also from the, from the special nature of this, of this asset class, renewable energy sources. They are um, of different sizes and they are very, very uh, widely spread around um, 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 the nations and the regions. And also, very often, the new owners of these assets are not energy professionals. They are farmers, they are um, uh, mayors, they are um, uh, maybe directors of a school. Huh? So you have a big problem in terms of finding the right asset size for, the, for every investor. Huh? Sometimes uh, maybe you are a, a small investor huh? and uh, the asset is much too, too large for you, so you cannot invest in a, in a big power plant. Or you are a large investor, huh? such as maybe a, a large uh, a pension fund, and then very, very often, especially in solar, these assets are too small for you to reach your hurdle rates. Huh? Um, also, transparency is a problem due to the fact that these guys um, who are now becoming energy entrepreneurs are not really energy professionals. They, it's very hard for them to know, does the asset actually exist that might be installed 1,000 kilo, kilometers away, and there are hundreds of them, does it, how does it perform huh? live, ideally? Huh? And how uh, is, the, is the profit distributed uh, equally and fairly according to contract to all the investors? And at the end of the day, it's maybe even the, the most important problem that we face, especially on the long, on the long end of the tail, um, the t topic of profitability. Yeah? When, you invest, uh, when you want to um, create renewable energy projects, um, many uh, project developers are overwhelmed um, with the opportunities or the, the necessity to sell their electricity. And very often, they, they just take the, the most easiest version. This is uh, taking the fixed-end tariff yeah? that's, that's available by other energy players that will take your, uh, purchase your electricity. But very often, this is not enough to, to make the a project profitable, although there would be much more markets out there um, to increase the value of this asset. So all of these problems stand at the center of our design to solve these problems and is at the center of our design of the MyPower Energy tokenization platform. Um, by tokenizing an asset, a wind asset, a hydro asset, uh, you know, a storage unit, um, you can basically um, find the right side, uh, find, uh, get access to every asset to every investor. So if the, uh, if the asset might be too small, huh, you can have um, many, many uh, different um, assets. They are tokenized. You can easily pool them into large pools and then uh, invest in them um, as, a, as a big vehicle. Or you can cut them into uh, smaller pieces, the way we did it uh, with Wien Energie in Vienna, where we took the, the largest solar power plant of the, of the nation and, 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 and basically tokenized it into 38,000 uh, shares and then sold it uh, online to the citizens of Vienna. I think in terms of transparency, I don't have to tell you here that, um, that um, putting all the transactions and holding the tokens on a distributed ledger is a superior way of, of creating transparency and, and, and auditability. So I don't, want to, I don't want to go into detail here. But in terms of profitability, this is very important. It's very important to us. Uh, and you can see later on that it's also um, one of uh, the big um, service streams that we work on is the, to uh, is, is the topic of profitability. And here, we want to make it as easy as possible for every owner of an, of an renewable energy asset, but with the help of tokenization, to access to different new marketplaces, existing marketplaces, decentralized marketplaces, but also upcoming new marketplaces. So, for example, direct uh, power purchase agreements, or you know, accessing to virtual power plants, um, selling your electricity uh, from your from your from your PV panel 
to a community for a better price, to an energy community, offering for grid balancing services, or also creating an interface to the data markets that are out there. The way we tokenize um, energy assets is, is, is really special. It's something unique because we start um, basically at the layer zero. We start at the machine and with the help of a trusted gateway device. This is the latest version. Uh, it's it's um, basically uh, um, uh, compatible to the most common interfaces uh, in the European Union. Um, um, for smart meter devices, and uh, we are very proud that it's also compatible to uh, two million um, smart meters in, in Vienna. This is directly, um, directly connected uh, to a metering unit, so with, with, in, with the installation, it creates an identity for the machine, yeah? be it a, a, a power plant or a storage or an electric vehicle charging station, and basically, um, uh, which, which, which allows basically the registration of this asset at the Ritalin Code machine network. And once it's there, the sky's the limit. So we can use this data then to tokenize the asset and further on also use uh, the identity in, in, a, in, a, in a hardware wallet environment, which is also um, based on the device, to sign each and every transaction between the mach uh, machine and other players in the market. To summarize it, um, I told you um, about the way to tokenize energy in a very uh, global framework and showed you some of the details of one of the services uh, which are part of our security token centric product range and service range. Um, the boxes in, in, in white are um, just, just indicating that those are services and, and software that we have already implemented and they are um, already run into the market and have customers. So, as you've seen, uh, if, uh, I told you about the left side um, today, about the security-centric use case asset tokenization, and uh, if you want to market your, your electricity, you very much go to the, to the right side. Yeah? You can combine these modules um, together. Huh? They are fluently um, um, and seamlessly connectable, and um, our thought behind this was always to start with asset tokenization because um, it's a, like a gateway truck um, for project developers into the distributed ledger uh, game. Huh? Because once they own an asset, once they own a token, they want to know how can I make most out of it? How can I increase the value of this token? And here they become addressable for the additional services on the right hand side. Uh, for example, energy marketing, where we already have a, a running project um, which will be finished in end of June in Vienna, where we will um, have a fully um, financial market um, compliant and also um, energy market uh, compliant peer-to-peer -peer energy sharing um, um, product out there based on the new um, energy law of, the, of Austria. All right, enough with the theory. Uh, I just want to show you what we exactly did uh, with Wien Energy for tokenizing one of the largest or the largest solar power plant uh, in Vienna. Um, after releasing a minimum viable product in February 2021 to 100 customers, and uh, we saw that this is quite successful, the, the, the feedback was overwhelming, um, Wien Energy decided to make this thing large, so they tokenized the biggest uh, power plant in, in Austria. It's uh, around 12 megawatt peak installed capacity and sold these tokens uh, in their online store to uh, more than 1,000 customers. This is, uh, they sold in total 5,000 tokens. One token represents uh, a solar panel um, for 250 euro. And now these customers are owners of a power plant. Eh? We securitized, uh, we sec we securitized um, the usage rights to this power plant and put it into a token, sold it, and now the users are holding those in their wallets 
And every day, every 15 minutes, based on the live data that comes out of our device, that is designed by our device, and they receive an addition of kilowatt hour tokens in their wallet. And they can see this live in a, in a web app. I'll show you later. Yes, with this kilowatt hour tokens, Bininegi currently makes exactly one thing. Um, they can be used after a certain period of time, it's the usual uh, billing period, um, to be used as a credit on the electricity bills of the customer. Yeah? And what was a nice gimmick um, back in you know, two years ago when we started developing the product has become a very, very attractive product now with the energy market prices rising. Yeah? So you can really see the, uh, really see the, um, the attractiveness of such kind of a product. You basically are hedging. You, you get a, a natural hedge against the energy market prices because, because you become an energy entrepreneur. And this is just possible through tokenization. You can see the live data dashboard. Um, on the upper, hand, uh, upper right hand corner, you can see the account balance, uh, the account balance of one of the users um, with kilowatt hour tokens. Um, the graph on the upper left hand side basically um, shows the live data. So uh, this Tuesday, the 19th uh, of October, is uh, over, the, over the day is increasing more and more and more, depending on how much sun is shining. And so the, the customer gets a much more tangible user experience uh, concerned to energy, which is also in the interest of, of an energy producer, huh? such as Wieneneki. All right, um, so let me close by um, telling you a little bit of the feedback that we received. Um, the, the customers that, that were buying this product, they were really, really overwhelmed with positive feedback. Um, especially because of the ease of use. Huh? You can very quickly become an owner. Secondly, because of the transparency. They see in live data what is happening with their power plant. And then obviously, because they saved a lot of costs. Huh? Because their, the electricity price that they receive when receiving power from their own power plant in Vienna is much cheaper than the current electricity price. So Wiener Energie is very happy about this. And they want, to, they want to roll out the product on an even larger scale and want to go into depth uh, with increasing usability um, uh, of the kilowatt hour token. Yeah? One use case that is obvious is that you can um, put it into, into your electric vehicle, right? Take the kilowatt hours from your power from, and put it into, into your electric car while you're not at home, maybe. So, yes. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'm also happy to take questions.